So we will talk about characters on uh, coronavirus from the developing Middle East. And of course, I want to say thank you to my partner, the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, and of course, the International Legal Forum. As we know, we're now in the middle of, um, of April, but some see this year already as the year of coronavirus, as we see the year 2020, uh, with all the medical um, equipment uh, inside uh, the year. I'll just introduce myself um, by myself in Hebrew, People call me Noam Bennett. In English, uh, the name is Bennett. It's, it's another story. I have bachelor's and master's in Middle Eastern studies. I also learned political science. I am now uh, working on my PhD on characters uh, in the Arab world. And as uh, Ifa says, I give lectures, I write columns. And in the corona days, if you can call that, I give every, every night and around nine uh, in Israel time, a short uh, lecture about the Middle East. Before we start, some see the leaders of the Middle East or of the world itself as the problem of the world. In this caricature, we can see the leaders of the world. In the center, we can see maybe the biggest uh, problem, if he thinks, that's Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel. Uh, on the top, we can see um, someone uh, resembling to uh, Ali Khamenei, the leader of Iran. After that, a leader, one of the leaders of Libya. Later, we get to Donald Trump, Boris Johnson of the UK, uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia, Abu Fattah Sisi of Egypt, uh, Bashar al-Assad from Syria, and probably the next one is from um, uh, someone uh, from an Arab world, maybe Qatar, maybe, um, maybe Saudi Arabia. But ho the whole idea is in that this is one of the first uh, caricatures uh, of the coronavirus uh, time, and the reason is that maybe the problem is our leaders. When we see caricatures, I want to open uh, a little subject, and that is that mostly people think that if you're talking to someone who's Arab, so probably he's Muslim, and Muslim is probably Arab, which is not. Most of the Arabs are Muslims, but some Muslims aren't Arabs. The big uh, country that isn't Arab, two of them, is Turkey and Iran. And there's a big conflict between a lot of the Arab uh, countries and Iran. And we need to think about it when we see the caricatures about Iran and, of course, from the other side. So one of the biggest accusations that the Islamic uh, Republic of Iran is getting that they are exporting terrorism. We know about Hezbollah in Lebanon. We know that they give money to Hamas and others. But now the Arab world is accusing them and exporting coronavirus. And how is that exactly happening? After uh, the coronavirus started to spread uh, through the, for the world, one of the only countries that didn't stop the flights is Iran. And the reason is that they still bought uh, oil from them and they felt that they want to help them and that they won't stop the flights. The, the problem is people came with coronavirus from China to Iran and from Iran through all the Arab world. And... That, that is one of the main reasons that the Arab world got hit by coronavirus, by people that came from Iran. So we see here a Shiat uh, clerk that is uh, pulling the um, water mines. But the water mines looks exactly like the coronavirus. The other thing that we see here, as it says in Arabic, the Arab uh, Gulf. The Arab Gulf and not the Persian Gulf as we know. That reminds us the conflict between the Arab world and Iran. Another thing is, some of you maybe remember, in the year of 2019, there were many pictures that people put on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and others. They showed a picture of themselves in 2019, and an old picture 10 years ago of 2009. And this is the same idea, but let's see, not 10 years, but one year. In the year of 2019, we see an Iranian guy pushing a big, big bomb to the Arab world. A year went by. 2020, and what is it pushing? The coronavirus for the same idea. So there's a criticism inside Iran on the regime that they continued the flights from China to uh, Iran. But this caricature, published in Germany, but uh, also in, uh, in other places, we see how the coronavirus is going down uh, from the plane. But maybe some of you recognize this caricature from an old picture. I'll give you a hint. This old picture is from the year 1979. From some, some of you are moving your heads. That means that you're understanding that we're talking about this picture. The picture of 
Ayatollah Rukhullah Khomeini, the founder of the Islamic Revolution, we see a double criticism. First of all, the criticism that, that you didn't stop the flights. The second is, a uh, caricature is from February 2020, and it says 41, uh, not, not, in, not in Persian, and, and, and the tweet, 41 years for the revolution. Khomeini arrived in February. So it says 41 years for this pandemic, the pandemic which is the Ayatollahs. So it's a very strong criticism, of course coming outside Iran, but the, uh, the cartoonist is originally from Iran. If you're fighting something, usually you want to show everyone that you're beating it, that you're winning. So here are a couple of caricatures from Iran. We see how they're shoving the coronavirus to hell. We know Islam also has their own hell. Um, some want to bury it. And this one, is I really like it. It's from a couple of days ago. It, the, we see it, it, Iran telling the coronavirus, you should go to your grave. But let's see the neighbors inside the graveyard. We see the king, the Shah. Of course, it was toppled in 1979. We see Saddam Hussein, as we all know from two wars against the U.S. Uh, and Israel know it from, uh, from 1991. And we can see ISIS also, as we, we also know as Daesh. ISIS, in the eyes of the Islamic Republic of Iran, they are the reason that ISIS lost. You know, some say, oh, it was because of the Kurds, it's because of uh, Russia, it's because of US, it's because of uh, Hezbollah maybe. No, Iran explains them for, to themselves and say, we are the reason ISIS was defeated. And the next one we will defeat is the coronavirus. And of course, one of the reasons that we will win is the medical staff. I think about my older brother, Yair, now, of course. But the medical staff was winning, and we can see on the right side, the coronavirus defeated. So let's say thank you for the doctors. The first caricature is from the, the biggest uh, Muslim country, Indonesia, not from the Arab world. We see a homage to a very, very famous picture from 1945. 1945, World War II, from Iwo Jima in Japan. There's a very, very famous picture of uh, American soldiers holding the flag. So here, of course, Let's say the anti, uh, antivirus against the uh, mount of uh, viruses of doctors. Another one we see uh, a doctor. This is a, a character from Iran. And we can see a man and a female. That's interesting. Um, uh, breaking the handcuffs of the coronavirus. Here we see, this is from Jordan. Of course, the doctor is trying to stop the huge coronavirus. Of course, they're... The, the, as we know, the virus is very little, of course, magnifying it so you can understand how big the problem is to the world. We see here the game chess. As you see, the angel of death here is leading. We see more doctors dying than coronavirus, but you know, let's hope for good. We can pray and hope for um, a better situation. Of course, the chessboard is the globe, of course. In Syria, in the beginning, they said that there's no coronavirus in Syria. On the one hand, it's totally weird because, you know, it's, there's, we're on the 10th year of the war uh, and probably, you know, if the, the medical thing there is very, very low. But first of all, you don't know all the time the reason of death. Second of all, one of the main reasons um, that, the, that the virus spread it is, um, is uh, tourism. And usually you don't, take uh, your next trip to Syria or maybe Libya or Yemen, places that there's a big uh, war for many years. Here we see the refugees and the coronavirus. Both of them want to flee to Europe, but they can't do it because they close the borders. Also in Turkey, we can see uh, a Saudi uh, caricature. Saudi and uh, Turkey also are, aren't good friends in these days. We see the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Get, got beat, we see signs of, of, uh, of shoes and a slap, and of course we see his shadow looks like a coronavirus, show, uh, trying to humiliate the president of Turkey. Um, also here we see two, uh, two individuals, the, the, the one on the right is the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, on the other side we see a Jew. Yeah, we see, uh, you know, we're, we're the day uh, that we had Yom HaShoah today, the day of Holocaust, and we see the sign on, on his uh, arm of the flag of Israel. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the Turkish uh, president, says death to Israel. But if we see what the boxes that he gives them, they give them 
aid, they give them um, help uh, for um, also for security and also for, for business that they do. So this caricature from Turkey says, you're talking that you want to kill Israel and you're such a big uh, sultan, you're such a big leader of the, of the Muslim world, but you're doing business with Israel, which is, is in their eyes a bad thing. Let's, let's say this one is from like a week ago, this caricature. As we know, there's a big, big war of masks and medical equipment. Each of you, I want, I want you to look at this character and think how many leaders do you recognize here? When I watched the first time, this is a character from uh, Iran. Uh, I recognized like three or four, I wasn't sure, but then I looked at the flag. So I know from left to right, it's the leaders of Italy, France, Germany, US, UK, and Spain. And we can see the flags of, um, of the US and the EU. Um, and we see how they fight for the masks. There were uh, allegations from Germany to the US and others that they stole uh, medical equipment. So that's about that. We also see another, another uh, Iwo Jima uh, flag, but this time it says in Arabic, the war of masks. And we see instead of a flag, a mask, of course. Here we see Italy, Germany, France, and the US fighting for the mask. This is from uh, Qatar. This looks like, for me at least, like the tip-off in basketball. In the one side we see Donald Trump, and the other side the world. Donald Trump is taking all the masks uh, from the world. And the last one, if some of you ha see three pictures, three participants, uh, maybe you can try to minimize it a bit, because I want you to see that we're talking about WWIII, World War III. That's what uh, Imad Khajaj from Jordan sees uh, this uh, situation. They're fighting for the medical equipment. As we know, we hear it all the time, you should stay home. And I see that you're in your house, so that's good. You're staying at home. Uh, if you stay home, we can beat the coronavirus. We can also do family gathering, but we can't meet, we can't kiss, we can't hug, but we can do it by phone. We see the rocket as a house, and of course the, uh, the coronavirus was frightened from it. Uh, this is from Qatar. Another one, a wrecking ball trying to break the house, but of course the house is so strong because we're doing the right thing, we're staying home. And by the other side, this is from Iran. We know there's a very bad economic situation there. Some people, when they tell them to stay home, they stay home, but their home is the street. We see a homeless man with all his belongings there. And we can see uh, the coronavirus there is getting closer to him. And the last one about staying home, of course, I don't know if you recognize the blue hand. I think about Robin Williams, of course, because this is the genie from Aladdin. Aladdin is rubbing the lamp, is waiting for the genie, waiting for the genie, what's going on? And the genie is just telling you, man, don't you know that you need to stay home? Um, another question that we, we see in the coronavirus time, of course, is, is it all about the money? We see the doctors, of course, going about uh, for the coronavirus. It looks like a goalkeeper in soccer. And Donald Trump, the American uh, president, going for the money. More criticism about Trump. We see the economy go down and the people are going sick of coronavirus going up. But he's, of course, going for the economy. That is more important. And, of course, that's criticism uh, from uh, Carlos Latouf. He's a very known anti-Semitic um, cartoonist. Uh, his family is originally from um, Lebanon. He's, he's now from Brazil in these times. Uh, another thing is uh, that uh, Trump said that he won't give money to the World Health uh, Organization. Of course, we see how he's holding it, uh, the organization, in the fighting against the coronavirus, COVID-19. And another thing is, as we know, the price of the American oil is now breaking. It's on minus. If, if you want to buy uh, toilet paper of oil, the toilet paper is cheaper than oil in, the, in our days. In Egypt, they want to say thank you also. We see here the map of, uh, of Egypt, who's holding it. Of course, a female doctor. We see here the white army of Egypt. We can see the statoscope looks like the Nile and the safe here, and it looks like a coat of a doctor. In Lebanon, we had like a half a year of people on the street protesting. They, uh, they even changed the government because of that, but when the coronavirus uh, spread there also, people got out of the streets. Last week, there were people, but mostly not. 
uh, in Lebanon, we see the man falling. It says there, the economy of Lebanon. Um, you see here the cedar, the tree of uh, Lebanon, of course, in the upside down. The situation is very, very bad. A couple of, <clears throat> excuse me, a weeks ago, the new prime minister, uh, Hassan Diab, told the um, international bank that he won't uh, return $1.2 billion uh, that they need to give like a couple of weeks, a uh, month ago, something like that. The situation there is very bad. And of course, what is Hezbollah doing? On the one hand, they're using their, their power. They have uh, doctors, they have uh, facilities, they, they have their, let's say, their army, and they're using it to help the people, um, the streets doing order. On the other hand, we see here criticism on Hezbollah not helping. We see the... The, gra the graph here going down as the economy we saw before. And of course, the Lebanese man there swinging on it doesn't look good. Um, of course, there's also criticism about uh, dictatorships that are utilizing the corona crisis to suppress liberty. We see here the coronavirus jumping from the torch to the megaphone. Uh, and we see the, all the don't enter on the coronavirus. Uh, it's criticism that dictators are using, you know, uh, they're closing maybe the social media and closing other stuff. Uh, you can't go on the street and other things. So people uh, feel that they have uh, less liberty. So the dictators are using, uh, using uh, this situation. Qatar, Qatar, we see here, you should notice, two women. One is a policewoman, one is a doctor. Uh, we see the injections and them uh, guarding the peninsula of uh, Qatar, we see, of course, in the, the, in the bigger picture, we see the coronavirus not touching the peninsula of Qatar. From Qatar to Italy, we know Italy is in a crisis of their own, like the old world, but the bigger one. Uh, and there, of course, uh, you can see that they have gloves, of course, but they gave them uh, money and equipment. We're towards the end. You, there's always, always a question of what about us? So I didn't plan to talk about us, but the characters talked to me and they said, no, we should talk about what's going on here. So we see here, of course, a character from Gaza. Uh, we see uh, it says stay home in Arabic. You can notice that Gaza is inside Palestine. Judah and Samaria, or the West Bank, is also in Palestine. But something is missing. That's the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights, in their perspective, is a part of Syria. So that's the reason we don't see the Golan Heights part of Palestine. <clears throat> we see here a character from Qatar. Uh, how the Corona... Uh, settlements is fighting the Palestinian. We can see this the, the Corona settlement, yeah, the settler uh, with their point. The points there is houses. The go the government of Netanyahu says that they'll build more uh, more houses and maybe more uh, places to live. And we can see the um, Palestinian. His mask isn't a mask. It's a tent. It's a tent. I want to remind you that he's a refugee in his in his own home. Uh, and of course, um, I'm looking now on the muscles. I think bo both muscles are the same size. Sometimes you see it, the, one side is stronger. Maybe the, maybe the Israeli is a bit stronger. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, here we see um, how Israel is uh, fighting um, the, past, the way the Palestinians are fighting for the coronavirus. And of course, we see the, the Dome of the Rock in the background, to remind you, the story is much bigger than a soldier against uh, 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 one, one or two Palestinians uh, in a place or two. That the story is, uh, is Jerusalem, is Israel against Palestine. It's a much uh, bigger story. Also here we see um, a soldier shooting coronavirus. There's a, a, uh, the Palestinians are accusing Israel that the coronavirus came to the PA from Israel, from the settlers, from the soldiers, from people who work here. Um, and you should know that not only in the caricatures, the prime minister of uh, the PA said that and others. It's, it's a big uh, thing that they're talking about it. Also here we see wh wh who are the Palestinians are fighting against. On the one hand, of course, coronavirus. And the other hand, you see a D9, you see a, a, for, in, in their eyes, in their, in their view, a symbol of the occupation. Uh, and the last one about this, we see how uh, the grenade the Israeli soldier uh, throws looks like the coronavirus to show you, of course, how, let's say, bad things in their perspective the Israelis are doing against the Palestinians. 
little thing, a little one, uh, cute caricatures. Of course, you need to remember, no kisses. There's another one with a baby with no kisses, but I put this one. The others, of course, the laundry looks a bit different in our days. We see here underwear, pants, and masks, of course. This is a good time to say that you're more than invited to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, YouTube, and Instagram. They're all called, uh, the letters are A-R-A-V-I-M-I-S-L-A-M. It's Aravim Islam. That's a mail that I opened when I started to work with that. I'm going now to the chat. If there are questions, you, you're more than right to write it. So, um, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Noam. This was a fascinating first um, um, insight uh, into, uh, into your research and, and, and what, what you're following. And, and I was really uh, overwhelmed with the, and, and uh, really um, excited to see so many examples from the Arab world. So I will invite every one of you, if you have questions, to write them in the chat. I will also ask Noam, to, you, you mentioned um, the address of your different channels, to put it in the, in the chat room. And um, maybe if, uh, if I may, I will ask the first question. Um, <laughs> why do you think caricatures um, are still as so important in uh, the Arab world? Are they particularly important in the Arab world and um, in the Middle East? And is the, the readership in the Middle East maybe more perceptive in this time to caricatures than in different um, other regions uh, of the world. Okay, so first of all, you know, I, I, I have a joke, uh, I don't know if I said with myself or with, uh, with my friends, that the reason that I, I research a caricature is because uh, I get tired when I read an article. But I think that exactly is the, um, is the answer. First of all, uh, when uh, the Prophet Muhammad brought the Quran in the, the 7th century, most of the people in the Arab Peninsula and other didn't know how to read and write. Of course, the Quran changed that. But even today, there's, uh, in Arab countries, there's, there's a percentage of people that don't know how to read. I remember myself as a child um, that I, I, when I read uh, a book or read a newspaper, I was looking for the pictures before I knew how to read correctly. Maybe I still do it. I don't know. But the thing is that People know that a caricature can say much more than just a print screen of what is happening. Uh, uh, for example, let, let, I'm just thinking one of the characters. For example, the first character that we saw. We saw the character of all the, um, uh, I'll put it back, okay. All the leaders here, you, you, if you didn't have the opportunity to write, what will be the other thing you could have done? You could have write a column of a thousand words or a couple of uh, columns and say, okay, you know, I think that uh, Netanyahu and uh, uh, Trump and others are, are like a plague. But you don't need that. You just show this caricature and follow Noam Bandit and, and, and social media, of course. But you just see that and you just understand. You don't need to read the article. You just see that. On the one hand, well, the thing that we can see is that people, even they, they, that if they know how to read and write, a lot of them will go to uh, the caricature because that, that tells them much more, uh, a much bigger picture. Uh, and the second thing is that you, you need to understand what exactly the cartoonist is trying to say. If you write a column and you say that your president is horrible, there's no other way from to throw you to jail and maybe to kill you. And you, we know uh, uh, people that had that uh, feeling. But if you do a cartoon or if you do a caricature, you, you, can explain, you can explain that, oh, you didn't understand that. And if, I think that, that it gives you uh, more opportunity to talk also against your regime, but mostly against regimes outside, of course, um, uh, your country. Uh, sometimes, as we saw the, um, the very strong, I think, uh, caricature of the plane, that this, is the, this man, uh, when he drew it, he drew it from Paris, which is much easier to do it uh, than from Tehran or Isfahan, cities from, uh, in Iran. Great. 
Um, there's a question from uh, Michael. Uh, is the Israeli press followed to a significant level in the Muslim world? Is it even available to all? Okay, first of all, of course, wait, I'll just see it again to make sure that I understood correctly. Okay, first of all, um, the, the, the answer is yes, of course. The question is, to what is expand? So, it, are there... The, are they checking Israel Ayom? Are they checking Yediot uh, Achronot, uh, etc.? Of course. But are they checking everyone in Twitter? Or probably they're checking famous people. I'll give you uh, an example from experience that I had. Uh, three years ago, August 2017, um, I wrote an article in the website Mida um, in Hebrew. And, and uh, the thing was that the, um, Ayub Kara, the, um, the Minister of Media, um, said that he will close uh, the, um, the station of Al Jazeera in Israel. And just to remind you, Al Jazeera uh, is a Al Jazeera is a Qatari uh, network, very very strong in the Arab world, and they're pro Hamas and others. And I, I wrote, what is Qatar? What is Al Jazeera? excuse me, good stuff and bad stuff. I mean, they're very strong. They're, they can influence the Arab world. They did it in the Arab Spring and others. Uh, on the other hand, um, they write about, uh, bad stuff about Israel and, and, and etc. And of course, I added a caricature because that's my thing. When I finished the article, I wrote that I assume that Israel won't really close uh, Al Jazeera. Added why? The reason is in 2014, some I see young faces here, you don't remember, there was a prime minister in Israel, his name was Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, and Benjamin Netanyahu had a, a minister of uh, media, his name was Gilad Erdan. Um, he's now the boss of all this uh, story here. Um, and Gilad Erdan said after Mirza uh, Tzuk um, Eitan, um, how do you call it? Protective Edge. Protective Edge, protective edge thank you. Uh, that because of all what happened in the Jazeera, what he said, he will close the Jazeera. And as they didn't close the Jazeera in 2014, I assume that in 2017 they won't do it also. A day later, I get a link. There's an article in Jazeera that an Israeli researcher uh, called Noam Bennett uh, says that, they won't, uh, that probably they won't close, in, uh, close the Jazeera in Israel. So the answer is, of course, they're checking. They won't, they won't check every uh, tweet that you do. Maybe if you have thousands and more um, followers, you're uh, interesting enough. But of course, the answer is yes, they're checking it. We, of course, do the same also through the military and not only. Um, great. There has been other two people have asked me um, separately if you can say a bit more about um, cartoons that blame Israel or the Jews um, bringing about Corona or making uh, use of the spread of Corona? Because there were a few examples in your presentation about in the Israeli-Palestinian context, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen an example in the, in the Sunni Arab uh, world that kind of were strongly maybe anti-Semitic and or anti-Israel. Did you come across such examples? Because this is also very interesting for our ministry because we're closely following up on that. I think most of, most of the things against Israel of the corona uh, were mostly against the, um, the settlements. Uh, there was two uh, caricatures uh, of Imad Khajaj from Jordan and Al-Alakta from Gaza that talked about the corona uh, normalization. Uh, the, uh, you know, it, it, in, in one way it's like a compliment to Netanyahu that the way that he is managing to bring other Arab uh, leaders to meet him. It was after um, the leader of Sudan, which is a big, big uh, enemy of Israel for many years. You need to remember 1967, Khartoum, the, the capital of Sudan, says the three no's to the state of Israel, to talk to Israel and others. So that country, the leader of it uh, is uh, meeting with Netanyahu. So you see how the normalization with Israel is like a disease. If you want, I can send you. You can see that. And there's another, uh, another caricature of um, after Netanyahu said he will build uh, more uh, in uh, Jerusalem. So you see um, the um, Al-Aqsa Mosque on one side and the Dome of the Rock on the other side. 
and you see many, many coronaviruses um, uh, around. I wrote Yerushalayim uh, Corona Savivla, as Yerushalayim Harim Savivla, as the Pasuk say. But I don't remember any character who see Netanyahu or an Israeli or a, like a, a Jew uh, poisoning water or things like that. Uh, I don't remember. We can see the, the character that I showed in the end uh, of a Palestinian uh, ca cartoonist uh, has a flavor of anti-Semitic anti more. We can see the Israeli soldier shooting Corona as the IDF is trying to bring uh, the coronavirus more to the, to the West Bank and others. But more than that, I'll look and tell you, but I, I don't know more than that. Uh, Great. I, uh, I have a question for you, Noam. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm interested in this from a strategic point of view. And uh, I was wondering if, uh, you know, when we are following our neighbors and the regimes that we're concerned about, especially Iran or Hezbollah in Lebanon, or even really closely following uh, the situation in Syria, um, would you say that now uh, with this uh, uh, crisis uh, happening also in these countries, do you see an increase in criticism, uh, you know, uh, in the caricatures that you see, maybe in volume or in nature? Uh, is there anything that indicates where the people, uh, where their heads are, is in concern to the regime themselves? I, I don't see something changing uh, rapidly. I, can, I, can, I can't say that people who talk against the same uh, leaders will do it more. Um, we saw it uh, on Iran. Uh, there's other car car characters that I didn't show, but uh, that talk about things that are going on in Iran. Uh, but it, it will be the same cartoonists that talked about the regime before. Uh, same thing against uh, Turkey slash uh, EU. The whole idea of, um, uh, of using the refugees. I knew that I have a half an hour. I didn't want to talk about everything. That's one of my problems. Um, I want to talk about everything. Um, one of the things uh, that, that happens now between Syria, uh, Turkey, and the EU is the refugees. The refugees mostly are from Afghanistan and, and Iraq, but um, um, Erdogan, the Turkish president, president, is using the refugees to get more money from the EU. Um, I don't know if people know, a couple of years ago, the EU, the European Union, uh, gave... Um, gave Erdogan something like six billion dollars um, maybe as protection uh, from the refugees, like four million uh, refugees from the Middle East, mostly not from Syria, mostly from Syria and mostly from Iraq and Afghanistan s are, are staying at, at, uh, are staying at, uh, at Turkey. And he says that, you know, and, you know I, it's, they're too much, I need, I need to open the gates. And he's using it, waiting for the Europe to say, okay, we'll bring you more, more, more money. But in the last like month, Erdogan sees that the problem is they're too busy now. They don't have time to talk about it. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, we can see about the coronavirus and using. There's a, there's a question about, uh, is there, at this time, uh, is there an increase in anti-Semitism? And I, if you can add to that, maybe uh, if you can address the last year or couple of years where we see something happening between uh, uh, the Israeli government and Arab leaders in the Sunni uh, world. Uh, so did you see a decrease before and maybe an increase now or just an increase now? I think I'll say two things. First of all, um, I assume uh, Jonathan and, and his guys, maybe if I yourself are, are fighting it, there was a caricature that was retweeted when uh, the deal of the century, the Trump, Netanyahu, and all that was published. It was retweeted that when you see uh, Netanyahu standing uh, near a crematorium uh, and you see the, the, uh, outside the, the sign from uh, Auschwitz. And, um, and the coven looks like the, um, looks like the flag of Palestine. Uh, and that did a big, uh, a big uh, fuss and a lot of Arab, and not, not only, but a lot of Arab cartoonists uh, came to the rescue. The, cartoon, the, the cartoonist that did it uh, is uh, from uh, Portugal. But it's interesting, if you're asking how did I find that ca uh, caricature, it's because I saw, ca ca uh, I saw caricatures from the Arab world that said, okay, we're with him. And I said, okay, what's going on? What happened? And then I started to, to search the, the web, and then I saw more people saying we're with, with him. 
and I checked more, and then I said, okay, what's going on? And then I found that, the, the, that Portugal cartoonist, uh, I think Vasco is his, uh, his name, um, retweeted that, that cartoon and they did a big uh, fuss about that. Uh, about the Arab, the Arab world in Israel, I think that, um, I don't know if it's increased or dis- decreased of uh, anti-Semitic cartoons, because I don't, I don't have the whole picture all over the world, the, uh, all over the years. They do criticize their, their, their rivals uh, through Israel. For example, there could be a Saudi ca- caricature that shows that Qatar is, uh, I don't know, shaking hands with uh, Israel. Why is that? Because Qatar, uh, they had a judo uh, championship and Israel was there. On the other hand, um, MBS, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the strongest man in Saudi Arabia now, the prince, uh, the crown prince, um, allegedly met Netanyahu. Israel didn't say he met, nobody, but there was a rumor that he met. So you can see um, characters from uh, Qatar, oh, you see the Saudis, how can they do it? There was a very cute um, ca- caricature when you saw Netanyahu standing on uh, the Temple Mount. And the other side, you see MBS standing on uh, the Kaaba, the Muslim um, temple. It was the day after he, he himself, he stood on the, the, the Kaaba. But you can see, and, and, and I think one of them or both are saying Shalom in, in Arab world. Not Salam, Shalom. Like they're speaking Hebrew. Like, like they're BFF, like they're bef- best friends forever. So they do use Israel to criticize their rivals, but I think... I don't, know, I, I, I don't know if I can say less or more, but I think they're using the relationship with Israel uh, to, talk, to, to criticize the rivals. Okay. Uh, we have uh, another question from uh, Malki Shaul. Uh, what, what can we see, what we can see in Egypt? She wants to know about Egypt. Uh, the one thing I can say in Egypt, it's a very nice place. I was there half a year ago for a week. But um, what can we say about Egypt? Uh, the situation is, is there, uh, there is bad. Um, you know, they just got to 1 million uh, people there. It was, excuse me, 100 million people there. Uh, and some say it's 104 and, f- and 5. They're trying to work it on. You know, the, the, some, the, one of the biggest questions, uh, here, I'll ask a question. Are the numbers are real in Iran, in China, in Egypt, in all those places? Are they lying or the numbers are right? Not, not through uh, caricatures, but there, there, there was criticism on Egypt when they looked at the numbers and said, look, all over the world, let's say there's a 1% or less, I don't remember the numbers, or more, they, they, they got coronavirus. We have 100 million people. That can't be right. That th- th- there's only, I don't know, 0.0 something uh, people who got coronavirus. The answer is two options, as we said before. One, they're lying. Other one, they don't know how to check it. People are just sick. They have the flu. You, know, you don't know exactly what they have if you don't have uh, the way to check uh, what virus uh, do you have. Maybe you just have the flu and that's it. There has been a question here about the anti-Semitism and whether some of the cartoons are uh, criticism or anti-Semitism. So um, I can only say that we, we look very closely at these uh, developments, uh, two things in this context. First of all, I highlight yesterday the Cantor Center at Tel Aviv University for the study of contemporary anti-Semitism. They published their annual report and they see a rise of 18% of anti-Semitic incidents for 2019. Now this study didn't look explicitly now at uh, Corona, because we are in this maybe for a maximum like of two months. So um, what, we, what we can see, uh, it's maybe difficult to quantify. We see that, um, as I said at the uh, beginning, um, there have been um, not few, uh, but quite many um, cartoons or comparisons that somehow blamed uh, the Jews uh, for either being responsible uh, for uh, the virus or trying to benefit in some form financially from the virus. And the, the labels are different. Uh, sometimes um, they use as an excuse the high number of Orthodox Jews in Israel that were kind of affected in the religious communities 
to uh, then portray them as the ones being uh, the, the spreaders uh, of the virus. This is, this is one theme that continued uh, in, in different forums. Um, also, I think in the US, in New York, you have a, a similar phenomenon that I think religious communities, because their lifestyle is in the community, were um, immensely affected. So they use this theme. And the second thing is there were some conspiracy theories that Israeli companies or Jewish investors would like to benefit from uh, the virus, some form that they are working on the cure or um, bringing out some um, medication. So our ministry, we, first of all, we look very closely at, at what is what is antisemitism, and and we use the Iowa working definition of antisemitism as an as a guideline or an underlying principle of 2016. And there you find a clear definition of what antisemitism is, and also you find different characterizations of antisemit antisemitism. And Yifa also has a um, been engaged with a unique project, how to advance the knowledge about IRA. Now, in the Israel context, we distinguish between different forms of antisemitism. We look at, we know of classic antisemitism, the blood libel and Jews being responsible for, um, for bad things that happen. Then we have modern antisemitism, where um, we, we see kind of a Holocaust inversion. Jews are being uh, blamed to be. Um, the, the Nazis of this time, or there are kind of comparisons between um, Jews today and Nazis in the past. And the third phenomenon is what we call the new antisemitism, where um, hardline anti Zionism is uh, uh, basically anti Semitism, denying Israel the right to exist or denying the Jewish people the right to self determination. And when we want to classify and distinguish, between criticism and anti-Semitism, we look at the examples and the definition. And uh, Nathan Sharansky is, uh, is quite famous for his 3D uh, test. And he looks whether a certain element is aiming to delegitimize, um, demonize or uh, Israel or the Jewish people, or um, if, uh, if there's a double standard being applied in the criticism. So criticism being issued at, um, at Israel, which is not issued at other places. There was recently a big discussion whether the term uh, Corona dictatorship in Israel is to be classified as anti-Semitism. This was really like a borderline case because at some form Israel just applied very similar measures to other countries in the fight against Corona. But some journalists in Europe used this to call Israel a, a dictatorship. So this was, was a very highly controversial and I'm in another position now to uh, put the, really the finger um, whether this was the criticism of the measure or, or whether this was clear cut anti Semitism. But this would be a, a lecture for another time. I just want to add, I just want to add to what you said. Um, uh, if you remember, not, not only talking to you, Jonathan, to all, 2015, uh, some people ta uh, called those times the stabbing or the knife intifada. Uh, people were stabbed uh, in the street. A lot of that happened in the Yerushalayim. Um, and people asked themselves, it's interesting that a lot, many of those people who were stabbed were, looked very, very religious. Most of them even Haredi. It, it, we can see it through the uh, caricatures that many caricatures, when they want to show is Israel or Israelis, uh, who, do we, who, would, who would we see? First of all, we uh, see Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, in the last 11 years with a, with a kippah. As we know, he's uh, not a religious uh, guy. With kippah, sometimes uh, with a uniform as the, as the IDF soldier. Um, and we, we might see, on a, let's say, a Haredi or, or someone who looks like a Jew from 100 years ago with a beard, with peot, with a, a hat. And when someone says to himself, you know, I got angry today or something bad happened today and I want to stab someone, you want to make sure that, you know, when you say L'Shem Yichud, you're doing it for the right person. And if I see someone with peot and a beard, he is probably Jewish. If I see someone with a, a normal uh, shirt, you know, I don't, I don't know who he is. Maybe he's Jewish, maybe he's just a 
tourist guy, maybe he's even an Arab guy, but probably an Arab guy or a Muslim guy won't be with peos and, um, and, uh, and a hat. So I assume that influenced uh, the people there. Okay. Okay, I think we, uh, we'll take a very last question. Maybe you can, we can answer shortly and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. So there's a question asked, if, I think we, you discussed it already a little bit, if you see increased criticism uh, from people against their own leaders in the Arab world, maybe also in, uh, expressed in cartoons in the Arab world or in Iran because of uh, COVID, the virus. Um, I, I, I kind of answered it. I think that um, the people that did criticize just do it more maybe, uh, but more than that. I saw someone else who wrote in the chat about, um, you know, I, I, I might say even being insulted. Why aren't they talking about us? Where, is, where were the Jews? They, they need to be against us. So first of all, as we know, they still, they still do that work, don't worry. But you need to remember, and that's one of the reasons that um, the Arab world is getting closer to Israel, even if it's under the table, is that they have much bigger problems about the Palestinian problem. So when they, not, it's not, not only the caricature, the caricature is like a mirror to what uh, many journalists and people think. So they don't really care about what happened. You know, there are many, there are many Palestinians, uh, cartoonists, that they talk about how the Arab world, every time they, they can do it, they forget about us. And every time uh, when they had the things with the magnometers and others, Saudi Arabia didn't say a thing, others didn't say a thing. Why is that? Because they forgot and they don't care about us any, uh, anymore. So the Arab world, yeah. mostly, they, they don't think about Israel that way. It, it, it doesn't mean that uh, they want to eat falafel in Israel or the Israeli will eat um, hummus in Damascus, as the late prime minister and, and president Shimon Peres uh, said. In the Arab world, it means we don't want to fight you right now. It doesn't mean peace. We don't want to fight now. We have other things to do. Not only coronavirus. We have many problems in, in our country. Also, the rich countries as Qatar and Saudi Arabia and others, they have their own problems. We send a lot of money to Palestine because we help them. We, we're against the occupation. That's what, what, they, what they will say. But... We, we won't stop everything and send troops to Israel. Israel, you know, and, and I'll just finish with that. I think one of the, uh, one of the biggest things that changed their uh, perspective was what they call the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring showed everyone that the problem of the Middle East isn't Israel. Many years, Arab thought, okay, if we just demolish Israel and establish Palestine, everything will be good. And then everything will be good, not only in Palestine, everything will be good in Cairo and Damascus and in Beirut and Baghdad and everything. But wait a second, we went to the streets in Tunisia and Yemen and all those, Libya, uh, because of our dic uh, dictators, because of the economy. Nobody spoke about Israel. And when Israel got out of the equation, people started to understand, again, it doesn't mean they're going to love us. It means that they don't really care about what's going on. All right. Great. So on this uh, optimistic note, uh, before <laughs> the floor to Yifa, uh, we want to say uh, thank you very much. And I would just for a second maybe uh, unmute um, everyone so that they can give you a round of uh, applause. One second. Oh, it's like a virtual, a virtual applause. Noam, thank you very much. I want, to, I want to highlight that we have our next webinar on Thursday in cooperation with the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, one of the leading think tanks uh, in Israel, um, which is a fascinating uh, conference, actually, um, a virtual conference uh, with the U.S. Special Envoy for the Fight Against Antisemitism, Ilan Carr, and the president of the Institute, the Jerusalem Center, Dori Gold, former Director General of Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, and other very senior uh, speakers, uh, where they will discuss um, the coronavirus and Israelophobia as a threat to national security. So I think this is, will be on Thursday afternoon. 
Um, the exact time uh, we will send around uh, again. Some of you should have received already an invitation. And I think this uh, is also very uh, promising. Jonathan, I'll just, Jonathan, just say that in this part of the lecture, usually I tell people to show themselves, um, like to, to show, to, to turn on their video so we can do a print screen, like a selfie. So if someone wants to, to uh, enter the room, we'll, uh, we can wait for a couple of seconds. Yeah, now, now everyone is unmuted, so first give you the round of applause that you So that, so that, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I see, I see people that, people that I know, which really warm their, my heart, and people that I don't know, that, which warm, warms my heart even more. If I have a last word, and then we're going to finish. And uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you. I said thank you to Noam. I want to say thank you to you too, Jonathan, uh, for your partnership and your help with everything. And that's it. I hope we'll all get uh, out of this crazy situation as soon as possible. Uh, so we can ba get back to our health and our sanity and our regular lives. But uh, maybe we, we can learn something and be better. Amen. Thank you very much. And uh, stay safe, everyone, and stay healthy. All the best. Laila Tov. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.